We had snow on the mountains and the hills, and the road was dry. That's just perfect. We, I'd like to have that all winter long, wouldn't you? And we did have a, have a very good time. And we, we thank you very much for that expression of kindness and your love to us. And we pray the Lord bless. And we come back refreshed and try to be do a better job than we did when we left. But I came back tired. <laughs> so you all pray for me. I go all the way. All right. But we are glad for all of you that are here. We want to invite the presence of the Lord here tonight. Lord Jesus, we're grateful and thankful to know, Lord, that you're as close as the mention of your name. You're a God at hand, a God that can be touched by our feelings and our infirmities. You're a God that is close as the mention of your name. Tonight, Lord, we come to you, O oh God, as frail men and women. Lord, in need of your grace, in need of your mercy. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know what things we have need of. You know every struggle. You know every battle. God, you know every temptation. God, you know every area that we deal with in our life and the circumstances that every family and every individual faces even here tonight. And I'm thankful, Lord, that you're the God that leads us through the valleys of the shadow of death. You're the God that leads us in still waters and green pastures. You're the God that leads us through the fire and the flood. You're the one, O oh God, that leads us in every situation. We put our faith and trust in you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will trust in you, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you're our light and our salvation. Lord, you're our buckler and our shield, and I praise you for it tonight. I pray tonight that you might wrap your arms and your spirit around each and every one that's here. These that have come here sorrowing, these here that come in with burdens, these, God, that are praying for family and loved ones, God, that are far and estranged from you, we're asking now, God, that you would minister, Lord, to them. I pray, Lord, that the prayers that have gone up before this service and the prayers that go up during this service, God, might come up before you as a memorial. And, Lord, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out your compassion and your mercy for the wayward, the wandering, the wounded, God, the confused, O oh Lord, the blind, and the halt. I pray, God, that you would do the healing work that only... Jesus Christ can do. I pray tonight that you might be the center of our life, Lord. And God, but you might be the one that we give all the praise and honor for and that you'd receive all the glory that belongs to you. We thank you for these, Lord, that you've brought through the doors in just recent weeks. We thank you for the hunger that you have put in their heart and the desire you put in within them to come near to you and to allow your spirit to give an opportunity for them to experience your love and your presence. For the word of God to be a lamp to their feet and a light to their pathway. I thank you for the faithfulness of your people and the prayers that have gone up. And may they continue to go up continually, Lord. Lord Jesus, we want to give you worship. Would you lift your voice with me now, church? Would you lift your voice with me right now? It's not about who we are. It's not about what we're going through. It's about who he is, and he's worthy of all praise. Amen. Hezekiah was surrounded, and we sent out praise and worship, and God sent an ambush against the adversary. Right now, Lord Jesus, we're praying now in the name of the Lord, God, that your angels would be round about each household and each heart and each mind here tonight. And, Lord, that you'd be glorified in all that we do or say, Lord. And for that, we're going to give you praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, be the center of our life, we pray, God. Be the center of all that we do or say. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we lift our voice a little higher? Can we lift our voice a little higher? Can we lift our voice a little higher to the Lord? Come on. Come on. Let's give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why we celebrate Christmas, because of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Our God is great and greatly to be praised tonight. He is an awesome God. My God, he is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, and hides me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I'm Oh, 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sharomasia Kayariando Santaya. Oh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Lord, you are awesome. What an awesome, awesome God you are, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Savior of the whole world, healer, giver of salvation. My God, Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No
He's here. Are you here? Is your mind here? Are your thoughts here? Everybody's dealing with something. Everybody's battling distractions. Everybody's got unanswered prayer. Everybody's got situations that say, how are we going to get through this? Everybody's dealing with that. But we're not just singing a song into the air to a deity that only exists in our imaginations. We're talking to a real God who's got real power, who can take care of real people with real problems. Amen. And he can do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But sometimes we come to church and we're all ready for the Lord to touch us. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. We usually come and say, Lord, bless my soul. I need you to bless me. I need you to touch me. And we're really not thinking about somebody next to you may be in worse shape than you are. The Bible says, look, much more blessed to give than receive. In just a moment, we're going to sing this again. We're going to pray for somebody beside yourself. And you better pray that somebody that's praying for you knows how to pray. Okay? And then you pray. A brother praying with a brother and a sister praying with a sister. The Lord is the one that redeems. The Lord is the one that forgives. You're here because of a merciful God. You know that? You're here not because you deserve to be here or because I deserve to be here. I'm here because of God's mercy and His grace. Amen. Amen. And I've said it more than one time. You better keep that bridge of mercy and grace wide because you're going to have to cross it. Amen. Amen. And I'm praying tonight, Lord, as we join together in prayer again, that you'd slip over to a brother, sister, and I want us to just pray earnestly for each other right now. I want you to say, God, I don't know what she's doing or going through, but Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that you would minister to him right now as this church prays right now. Lord, there's none like you. There's none like you and none above you and none beside you, Lord. I'm praying right now, God, for this one right now. You know what they have need of? I'm praying right now, God, against every spirit that would hinder. I'm praying right now, Almighty God. Lord, would you come and show yourself real right now? Yes, Lord. Show yourself real right now, God. Lord, I need your peace and I need your forgiveness and I need your mercy, Lord. I need you to create within me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. I'm praying, God, that you'd give strength where there's weakness, God. That you'd give hope where there seems to be no hope. That you're the God that restores the joy of our salvation. You're the God that we're looking to right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, lift your voice and sing it. His power gives me strength. Yes, it does. His grace covers Yes, it does. There's no one like our God. There's no one like Jehovah Jireh. Oh, yes. There's no one like you, Abba, Father. His power gives me strength. His grace, it covers me. Every 
heart and is binding every fear. He is here. He is here. I feel him in this room. I feel the presence of the Lord. Do you reach out and feel the presence of the Lord? to the Lord yet? What have you turned over to the Lord yet? What is it you're still carrying? He's the burden bearer. He's the God of forgiveness. He's the God of not just a second chance, but another chance. He's the God that's as close as the mention of his name. He said, when you seek me with all of your heart, You'll find me. Sometimes we have a hard time getting through all the stuff, isn't it? Casey, it's sometimes kind of hard, you know. And we can come and we can sing the song, clap our hands, and we're still having a hard time getting connected and just putting our mind on Him. And that's why we sing, not because we just sing it for enjoyment's sake, although we do enjoy the presence of the Lord. We're really trying to just get in the presence of God. Because if you come to church here tonight and you don't touch God, and something's between you and the Lord, then you're going to miss what God's doing. You're going to be too focused on something else to even receive what the Word of God has to say. Amen. Amen. And we want the Lord to minister because in this service here tonight, there are many special needs, not just physical, but emotional and spiritual. We as a church need God in a special way. We need God's deliverance and His protection. We need the angels of the Lord to encamp round about it. And we like to do everything he can to take you out. Turn to somebody and say, the devil wants to take you out. He don't care what he uses. He don't care who he uses. He just wants you out. Somebody needs to say, well, it's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I didn't come here because of anybody, and I'm not leaving because of anybody. I'm here because of Jesus. Amen. Have you got that kind of made-up mind? Huh? Amen. Amen. There's people here that have come hungry for God. May not know too much about Him, but they're giving themselves an opportunity. There's been a lot of prayer saying, Lord, you know where hungry hearts are. And Lord, we pray for the wandering and the wounded and the wayward. And Lord, that you might draw them to you. And I'm praying tonight, God, for every household that's represented here. And I'm asking God that your sweet spirit would come and sweep over our heart. I come against the assault of the enemy on every mind, every peace, every heart every soul, every one individually, collectively. I'm praying now for the blood of Jesus Christ to be shed abroad upon our heart and cleansed here today. And Lord, would you minister as only you can. Lord, in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hand with me one more time as an expression of our surrender to God and an expression of our need of Him and Lord, of our faith in Him that He knows what we have need of better than we know. God, you answer the prayer that I would pray if I knew what you knew. Don't answer the prayer that I'm praying, but answer the prayer that you, if I knew what you asked, and if I knew what you knew, the prayer that I would pray. If you knew what God knew, amen. Lord, answer the prayer that you would have me pray. 
Not the prayer I'm praying, but the prayer you'd have me pray. Right now, Lord, create, change, heal, bring light into the darkness. Oh, God, come against every spirit of pride, stubbornness, rebellion. Come against that, Lord God. Come against deception in all of its forms. Come right now, Lord Jesus, your Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, we come to you and humbly confess, Lord, without you we can do nothing. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. But Lord, we're confident, oh God, that if we place our feeble hand in your nail-scarred hand, you're going to lead and direct us now. And that's our prayer. There's no one like Jehovah Jireh. Yes, Lord. Right. His power gives me strength. Yes, Lord. His grace it covers me. Cover me, me, Lord. There's no one like God. How many need the Lord to cover you this night? How many need the Lord's covering? There's no one like Jehovah Jireh. There's no one like you, Abba. presence gives us strength. You may be seated. Amen. Are you dismissed? Are you all practicing for anything? All right. We'll just practice staying awake tonight then with us. The rest of us. The rest of us will learn how to do that. God bless you. If usher come, we're going to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord here with the offering. To this weekend, uh, we're having our Christmas program, and uh, there's a couple of rehearsals for that. And then also, uh, we have a dinner afterwards, and so there's a sign-up sheet. We'd like to invite you to to participate in that, invite somebody to come and be a part of it, and uh, the Lord will bless you. And for that, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And so we're going to ask the Lord's a blessing here on our offering tonight, and we want to remind the church that toward the end of the month, first part of January, we'll take up our Christmas for Christ offering. That's the offering that we have for Jesus at Christmas time. Amen? We don't want to give everybody a gift and forget Jesus, do we? Jade, why don't you pray? Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Yep. Brother, I need you to pass them things out here. What you got? You got that one? You got another one? Brother Jones, would you help us on this side over here? Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> um, I've been thinking a, a lot lately on Pastor Holt's messages. I just think he's been on fire the last couple months, preached and taught some of the best messages I, I can recall him preaching. As I said before, 
you know, his message on um, that he preached to the church, you know, wounded in the house of the friends, um, sheep without a shepherd, learn to be content. All of these messages that he's preached over the years have impacted. But um, some of the messages he's he's brought to the church um, in the last couple months have just been powerful. You know, it causes you to reflect on your own heart, your own mind, your life, how you're impacting others. You know, and I... I uh, I was reading in the book of Proverbs, and I'd like to turn your attention to the 24th chapter. And I was reading the 24th chapter of the book of Proverbs, and I got down to the 15th and 16th verses, and I couldn't get, get off of it, where it says, Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and rises again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And have you ever read a scripture many, many times, then all of a sudden one day it kind of captivates you, and you, you and, it, and it kind of captivates you in it, and uh, you see it in a different light. And I kind of want to dovetail onto some of the things that Pastor has been teaching to us the last couple um, couple months about forgiveness, about um, uh, our own hearts, and how we need to put a guard on our heart, and these, these messages that have caused you to do inward reflection. And um, I'm going to take from the setting of scripture in Proverbs where it says, lay not in wait as a wicked man. This is from the current English version against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home for the righteous falls seven times and rises again. And I thought, what a powerful scripture. You wouldn't think that a just man would be the one that is falling. You'd think there would be different accolades or different earmarks of somebody that is righteous and just. But the word of God touches right where we need to be touched. And it says, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again. And I stand before you an imperfect person. Um, I think I have fallen more than seven times, but I'm still here. I'm still wanting to serve the Lord. I'm still trying to love God and live for God for the best of my ability. Have we made mistakes? Yes, every one of us. In fact, the Bible says if God marks iniquity, who, who of us could can stand? And so I, I want to bring to you um, from the title of this study that I put together the other day, what to do when you fail, what to do when you fail. In the first section, um, we want to look at Proverbs 24, um, 15 through 16. We just want to examine it. In our notes, it says, the enemy of your soul has one end in mind for you, and that is destruction. He's come to steal, to kill, but his end goal is your destruction to destroy you. And eternal separation from God. He doesn't want you to be in church. He'll do every means he can to get you away from Jesus Christ in your relationship with him. Now, in our notes, it says his tactics, as Pastor has taught recently, are aimed at attacking our mind and gaining strongholds in our life. So he attacks our minds, the battlegrounds in your mind, gird up the loins of your mind, put on the mind of Christ. Um, and how many here have ever been under stress and you lay in bed and your mind just doesn't shut down? It just keeps going. There's a battleground there. Some people get something against them or have an offense against them, and they can't ever let go of the offense. They just keep revolving it around in their mind, and they get stuck there. And pretty soon that offense may become a stronghold because it first takes a, a toehold, then a foothold, then it becomes a stronghold. Now, the writer of Proverbs reveals several things to us about this. In section A, it says the tactics of the enemy against God's people. Now, in the 15th verse, it says, Lay not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home. And so let's look at that. What, is that. what does that mean? Well, this is just my thoughts on it. You might have some other thoughts. But um, I, I believe that it gives us keys to why we can fail and what we need to do when we fail. So the tactics of the enemy against God's people. Satan does not care who or what he uses. He is not concerned about playing fair and will use whatever means is possible to destroy you. He is seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you. Notice some insight 
that Psalm or Proverbs 24, 15 gives about Satan's tactics against you. It says, lay not in wait as a wicked man. Satan uses, number one, he uses schemes against us. Um, in the New Testament, it's called devices. We're not ignorant of his devices or his schemes. We're not ignorant of how he plots against us and, and the things that he uses to cause us to stumble or become entrapped. And so he uses these schemes, but he, in this Proverbs, it brings it out and says, lay not in wait as a wicked man. Now this, in our notes, says, brings with it the idea of ambushing or plotting to despot, demise. This has been a strategic plan for assaulting God's people for as long as God has had a people. God is always trying to, or the, Satan is always trying to assault and set traps and schemes and devices against the people of God. It was the tactic of choice employed by the Amalekites against Israel in the wilderness. Stop there. Remember the Amalekites, how they would come up and they'd sneak up on the rear of Israel and they'd have these little, you know, assaults that would come against them. They would, they would um, come and, and they'd use those type of tactics where they just pick off a few or, or pick off the stragglers. But they were always assaulting God's people. And God took note of that these assaults that came against his people. Back in our notes, it says, because of these ambushes against his people, God brought judgment against Amalek. In fact, that's why God said to Saul, go utterly destroy the Amalekites, because when my children were in the wilderness, this is what they did to them. Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> Israel's attack came from without. But Paul speaks to us about attacks not just from without, but also from within. Galatians um, tells us to beware that we don't bite or devour one another and be consumed one another. And so as a body of believers, we should never incite contention and we should always seek reconciliation and unity and peace. Number two, what do we find here? These attacks were focused. I'm sorry for my voice today. I had to go in for a heart procedure and I think the shock did something to my vocal cords, you know. But anyhow, uh, I don't have a cold. So. <laughs> but the attacks are focused. Notice what it says. It says it's against the dwelling of the righteous. And so these attacks are precise and focused. Um, Satan knows exactly where to attack each and every one of us. And his attacks are focused. That's why he calls some of them snares. A snare is placed in a, you don't put a snare out in a parking lot and try to catch a rabbit. You, you look in the field for, for game trails, and you look for a field where they've, they've, been, they've had traffic through by certain animals, and that's where you set your snares. It's a place that they had frequented before. Satan knows where we have frequented in our past life before Christ, and he understands there are certain weak areas that if enticed, we could walk into the snare of the devil. And um, so um, his attacks are focused, um, very focused attacks. Now, we are all in a warfare in our notes. We all come under spiritual attack. These attacks are focused on discouraging you, minimizing you, or, um, or you to be in a place of hopelessness or frustration about your life in and your walk with Jesus Christ. And I think every one of us here can say, amen, I've been there before, been there and done that. Number three, it's um, these attacks seek to paralyze you. It says, do no violence to his home. Um, that word violence means to bring chaos or disruption. Has your home ever um, gotten some headlines that disrupted your whole house and it paralyzes you? Have you ever been paralyzed in your walk with God because of an assault? of the enemy that just stops you in your tracks and causes you to, to wonder, you know, is there going to be, is the sun ever going to shine again? Is there ever going to be a good day? You know, it, it paralyzes you. Satan wants your walk with God to be paralyzed. He wants you to stop. He wants you to retreat. Why? Because we are always to be moving forward and walking in faith and living for God and following our pastor as he follows Christ. It's a forward motion. Because the minute you stop is the minute that you stop following, and he wants to paralyze you. So in our notes, it says, at times, Satan may use others to bring chaos and disruption in our life. 
This tactic is used to focus your attention away from God and paralyze your walk. Praise the Lord. Letter B, let's look at the response of the righteous. So we know that we're going to be under attack. We know that we can be paralyzed. We know that we can be focused. And notice what it says um, in Proverbs 24 and 16. It says, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again. I thought to myself, my, I've fallen a whole lot more, Dion, than seven times. Jason, I've been down on and down sometimes that think like you're down for the count. But you have to get back up. Sometimes you get, you're going to get knocked down. But it's not staying, it's not getting knocked down that's the problem. Um, we're going to look at that. What makes a, a man just or literally righteous? Stop there. You know, I, I would think that God would probably use a different analogy for the righteous. But notice what he says about a just man. It says that he, he falls. He fails. And it says here he, he fails seven times. I don't know if that's a literal seven times and then you're just. But I think it's just a, a number. It, it, it's just a continuance that you fall seven times. And he, he says that the one that does this is the just man. He falls, Brother Meadows, but he rises back up. Praise the Lord. So what makes a man just, literally righteous? Is it perfection? Is it getting it right all the time and never sinning or having a lapse of judgment? No. None of us are perfect, and each of us falls short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus Christ came, is because we weren't just, we weren't righteous. We fell short. Praise the Lord. There was no way you could get to God. We were unjust. We were unrighteous. But it, because he came for us and he bestows righteousness and forgiveness and love and grace and mercy, praise the Lord, you and I can become righteous in him. Praise God. So let's look at this. Number one, imperfection isn't your end. When you're, because you're imperfect, there is no dead end sign out there. Imperfection isn't your end. Notice who the writer calls just. It is the man who is imperfect. It's a man who falls seven times. A person who makes mistakes in his walk with God. Or maybe you still struggle with getting past your pre-Christ path. Let me encourage you today. You're here tonight. You've fallen, you've failed, but let me encourage you. You are here tonight. You're among God's people. You're in the house of the Lord. You lifted your hands. You praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God already knows your frame. He knows that you're, you're weak. He understands your frame, that you were um, formed in, in, in transgressions. You were, you were birthed in sin. God knows all of that already. That's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are imperfect, but we serve a perfect God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And you are here because you're imperfect. You are here because you have fallen. You are here because you're in a fallen state. But the just man falls seven times, but he rises up again. Praise the Lord. You may have failed. You may have fallen. But such were some of you. Such was I. I fail all the time. I admit it. Praise the Lord, but can I tell you that when I go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness, he washes me, he cleanses me, he sanctifies me, he forgives me. Praise the Lord, and I can rise up and walk with the Lord again. In our notes it says he is just because he is not self-righteous. He is just because he understands that, number two, falling does not make you a failure. A righteous man recognizes his failings, but doesn't make excuses for them or allow them to paralyze his or hers walk with God. While Satan may tell you, as the songwriter says, you've sinned, no use to pray. But God tells us to look away to Jesus, and he tells us to say, I see a crimson stream of blood. I've needed his blood so many times in my walk with him. 
I have needed his cleansing. I've gone to him and asked for forgiveness so many times. And I'm so thankful that I don't serve a God with a big silver sledgehammer that just knocks you over the head and says, that's enough. I'm through with you. No, our God is a God of reconciliation, a God of love, a God of God of mercy. I'm so thankful that I serve a God that is merciful. Praise the Lord. Number, um, your failures are not the final word in your life. Jesus Christ is the final word in your life. And he turned around and showered grace to some of the most despicable things that have taken place. He, I know what he has showered grace upon me, but in his word, Mary Magdalene, the woman caught in adultery, you know, the, the woman that washed. In fact, people said he, he hangs out with sinners and publicans. Well, that's who needs his mercy and his grace. They were pointing out the sinners and the publicans and the faults. And, and Jesus said, well, that's who needs my mercy and my grace. I didn't come for the righteous. I came for these sinners. Christ died for sinners. He dies for those that have fallen, those that have failed. Praise the Lord. And even after we come into the, into the, into the house of the Lord and the family of God, you're still going to fail. There's none of you perfect. You're still going to fall. And what you need is you need arms of grace and mercy. You need to be showered with mercy. And the Bible says how you give it out is how you're going to get it back. So I want to be a merciful person, praise the Lord. I know you do too. Hallelujah. Number three, falling doesn't have to be fatal or final. I know there's people, a pastor preached a message one time. It was another, another one of my favorites if it was in his um, top ten hits, you know. It would, it would be, uh, there's never a good time to quit. He was preaching the other day, and he, he said something about it, and I said, no, there's never a good time to quit. You know, <laughs> I wanted to shout that out, but I didn't think it was appropriate during the service. Praise the Lord. But failing or falling doesn't have to be spiritually fatal or final. In our notes, it says this failing, literally stumbling, doesn't have to be your spiritual end. God made provision for you that no matter how many times you fail, fall, or falter, God has provision that is greater than any sin, any transgression, any failure. It is his grace, his mercy, and his blood. And you get it as often as you need it. It says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you of all unrighteousness. In the Old Testament, they even had provision for it every time you touched um, a form of death, a grave, a bone, or, or a, a dead body. God made provision for them. It was the only type of um, um, offering that was actually administered directly to the people. And that was the ashes of the red heifer. You know, we all encounter death because sin leads to death, right? And we all encounter the wages of sin is death. And um, but in the, the ashes of the red heifer, whenever they touched a grave, it must have been really, really difficult, you know, because you couldn't step on a grave. You couldn't touch a dead a person's bones. You couldn't touch a dead body. You're unclean. But God made provision for that. And I believe that the ashes of the red heifer is just like the blood of Jesus Christ. They took the ashes of the red heifer, put it in water, and they sprinkled it on the individual to make him clean or her clean. Praise the Lord. That's the same thing with us when we are when we are, are um, confronted with sin and we become sin-stained. Jesus Christ, through his mercy, aren't you thankful for a merciful God? Jesus Christ, through his mercy, sprinkles his blood on us. Praise the Lord. We are under the sprinkling, Casey, of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And he cleanses us as often and as many times as we need it. Isn't that wonderful? There's never going to be an end to the time that Jesus Christ doesn't look at you and say, Jason, I forgive you. If, you're, if you confess your sins, I'm faithful and I'm just and I will forgive you. Praise the Lord. Number four, God calls to you to get up. It says a righteous man or a just man falls seven times, but he rises again. In our notes, it says a just man is a man that gets back up. He learns the lesson, repents, and continues to walk. To the just man, falling isn't the problem. Staying down, becoming defeated by failures, and turning from God would be the problem. But here you are with failures, but here you are victorious in Christ. 
That's why the Bible tells us to stand there for, lift up your head, uh, keep walking with Christ, stand with him. You always have the victory in Jesus Christ no matter what you've done. In our notes it says he realizes, he realizes that you're imperfect, not he's imperfect. Sorry, it should be. He realizes that you're imperfect <laughs> and that you, but you have a perfect Savior. A just man is one who looks to his righteous God for mercy at the lowest times in his life when he has failed miserably. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are not a perfect person. Yeah. Turn to the person on the other side and say, hey, you're not a perfect person. If God would mark it, none of us would, would stand. You know, tell them that you need grace and mercy and lots of grace and mercy. Turn to the person and say, you need, and you're going to need a lot more, Brother Jones, as, as time goes on. Isn't that right, Sister Amberly? Yeah, he's going to need lots of it. Yeah. You're going to need lots of grace and mercy before you go to the Lord or before the Lord returns for you. Now, take out your cell phone. Everybody's into selfies. And why don't you take a picture of yourself? And say, I'm a sinner and I need grace. I'm a sinner and I need, <laughs> take a picture of yourself and say, this is what a sinner looks like who has had the grace and the mercy of God showered onto him or her. That has had the blood of Jesus Christ released from every sin stain. And that you're going to sin again and you're going to have fail failures again. But the just man falls many times but what makes him a just man is that he rises back up again and walks with God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He understands that you're carnal and that you're a sinner. He, but he is the perfect Savior that has shed perfect blood that cleanses and covers and washes and sanctifies and justified. And this is a Savior that looked at that woman that caught an adultery and said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Praise the Lord. Micah puts it this way in her notes. Rejoice not over me, O my enemies. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. So what does this all mean? You know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day as we were driving down the road. I won't mention who it is because you all know him. And I told him, I said, I know you struggle with failures. I know you struggle that you're not perfect. I know that it, it really impacts your mind. I can see it on your countenance at times. And I told this individual, I said, I understand what it's like to fail. But you will never, ever see me kicking you and keeping you down. I will help to lift you up. Because the church is called to reconciliation. The church is called to reconciliation, restoring right relationships. And so it's never a time to keep them down. It's a time to help them rise back up again. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. So let's conclude this, this lesson tonight. Sorry I kept you a little bit longer than I intended to. Here are a few final thoughts that we should glean from today's lesson and apply to our lives. Number one, don't allow your failures to be final. Again, failing doesn't disqualify you as a just man. Failing does not disqualify you as a just man. Number two, repent quickly. Learn the lesson and move forward. Repentance and restoration, aren't you thankful for repentance? Oh, I've had to use repentance. I repent on a daily basis more than one time. I repent on a daily basis more than seven times as this guy fell. Repentance is, is such an important thing in your walk with God that you ask the Lord to forgive you. You learn the lesson and you move on. Repentance and restoration are at the heart of the gospel and are the keys to continual and faithful walk with God. Number, number three, be gracious to those who fail. As I was mentioning earlier about the individual I was talking to, I know failure really, really bugs him. But be gracious to those individuals. Help to lift them back up. Help to prop them back up and get them back on their walk with God. Don't let your, their failures be final in your eyes. But be, be somebody that is there one day helping, helping them up. In our notes it says, one day you may be the one in need of gracious help to continue. And finally, fulfill your calling 
be a reconciler. The church, every one of us has a ministry. We all have a ministry. And that is the ministry of reconciliation because it is a church and the church alone that has the message of reconciliation. We're not called to be the judge. We are called to be the reconciler. We're not called to be the accuser. That job's already taken, Nevin. And he's really good at it. He's really good at it. We're not called to that line of work. We're called to reconcile. That's beyond forgiveness. That's making the relationship right again. And the church is called to reconcile. Now in our notes it says, don't be used as by the accused of the brethren to further his work against the church. Instead, seek to restore a brother or a sister who has failed and stumbled. Paul puts it this way. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Pastor preached about that a couple weeks ago and used that scripture. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And finally, in closing, when you fail, get up. Because, Dion, it's hard to keep a good man down, a just man down. Let's all stand this evening. I want to encourage you. You can walk out of this place and you can stumble and fall. You're, you're going to slip up, say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing. Get in a situation, a circumstance that they have a hard time extracting yourself from, need, need the mercy and forgiveness of God, need the help and the support of the church. I'll tell you what, you're in a church that lives for reconciliation, a church that has built itself on not looking at what people are and not looking at who they were, but looking, Brother Jones, as what they can be to help them lift them back up and on their feet and dust them off and continue to walk with Christ. I pray that that spirit would be here today. If you if you have a problem in your life and you've struggled with your failures, I, I ask you to come forward tonight and join me because I do. I struggle. I fail. I've had to go to pastor and tell him failures that I've had more, more than one or two times. This is my best counselor good friend and sometimes it's hard to tell him what where you failed in areas that you don't want anybody to know and you don't want to expose because sometimes you just don't trust people with your feelings but I pray that's not in this church I look around here at men that have fallen but you're here tonight women that have stumbled and tripped and made a mess of things but here you are tonight why God doesn't look at you as failure, doesn't look at you as faller. He looks and says, that's my child. I've cleansed him, I've washed him, and he rises up and walks in righteousness. I'm thankful we serve a God like that. Let's lift our hands right now in Jesus' name. Whatever it is in your life right now that you struggle with, you struggle with your past, you struggle with situations, circumstances in your life that, you know, aren't right, whatever it is, you know, praise the Lord. It's not the end. There's no dead end sign. Jesus points the way. and We press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ. But wouldn't, wouldn't it be terrible if, if it was three strikes and you're out, you make a mistake one time and that's, you're done with, you know? Wouldn't it be terrible? Aren't you thankful that we serve a God of many, 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 many chances? Aren't you thankful, that you, Angela, that you serve a God that he doesn't throw stones at you. He, he throws rocks of mercy at you. He showers you with the mercy. Aren't you thankful that we serve a God like that, Jason? It says, you know what? Yeah, you failed. That's right. That's why I died. That's why I shed my blood. That's what the gospel's all about. You're a failure. Admit it. Yeah, I am. Take that selfie. I'm a failure. But I need God, and I have a God that, that looks beyond my failures and showers me with his blood, covers me with his mercy and his grace. And if we're going to give anything, be a, be a merciful. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the merciful. Why? Because they will obtain mercy. And I know I need a bucket full of mercy every day. Praise the Lord. God bless you. That old hymn, it's amazing grace. 
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Would you join us up at the front? I was blind. Anybody that believes in the grace of God, why don't you come join us up here? There's grace and mercy for us here today. Well, it's amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. some danger you've been in places that were spiritually dangerous yes yes I've been there already in your home. church. We've got something to praise the Lord for tonight. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your stubborn love. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for the desire you put in our heart to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for your promises and your word. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's amazing grace. He showed it. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Romans said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall lay any charge to God's elect? It's God that justifies. Amen. Doesn't take us very long to find fault, does it? 
Yes, we have. But I'm thankful for the Lord. He's looking for a reason to save us, not a reason to destroy us. And I pray that God would help us continue to pray one another, that God would bless and strengthen, put a desire in our heart to serve the Lord. I once was lost. I'm not lost now. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not lost now. I once was blind. I'm not blind now. Now I see. Praise the Lord. His grace covers it all. I'm thankful for that. That's not a license to sin. That's not the message. It doesn't mean, well, it don't matter what you do, you know, God forgives. No. The Bible says those that have this hope purify themselves even as be as pure. We're trying to live for God. Amen. We're not trying to just make an excuse and get a free pass because of grace. That's not grace. The Bible said the grace of God teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Looking to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. But I'm so thankful. Amen. The Bible says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord has pity on them that fear him. He knows our frame that we are but dust. Amen. Amen. I'm just glad for God's mercy. I'm just glad for God's mercy. And I will tell you before your journey is over, you're going to need to show some mercy same bridge that you got to God was the mercy and grace of the Lord. It's the same bridge. You're going to have to invite somebody else to say, come on. He forgave me. I forgive you. Amen. And I'm just praying against everything that would attack you, attack this church, attack your home and your family. We keep it all under the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful, Lord, for that. Aren't you? Amen. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord one more time, can we? Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity we have to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We thank you for our time. Thank you for the word of the Lord reminding us of your grace. Amen. Lord, would you get keep the get up in us? Amen. Get up, get up, get up. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, just keep getting up. Say, get up. Get up, get up, get up. God bless you. We'll look to see you on our Christmas program this Sunday. The Lord bless you. Hope to meet you in prayer. Be sure and, and uh, sign the sign-up sheet out there so you'll have something to eat when you get here.